Hello. Uh, good to see you. How's it going? This isn't a normal intro because this isn't a normal video. I'm going to make a video, of course, going through the last Divinity update real quick with you. Uh, it found nowhere else to do it, so we're just going to do it in the patch notes section here. Just a quick run through, give you my thoughts, all of that fun stuff. Which, in case you haven't seen, uh, there's a DLC today, I guess. Woke up and I went, oh wow, this looks different. Now I, of course, I knew. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to roll through these real quick and then record today's episode because I haven't recorded it yet. So let's get to it, shall we? Hopefully this video isn't too, too long because I have uh, episodes to record today, but it shouldn't be. So, of course, the main two things, the Wormkin and the Last Divinity, I'm sure you're well aware. Uh, I'm mostly just going to talk about uh, the changes. The artifact changes. I haven't read through all of them, but I know a lot of them from playing the uh, the beta. So, you know, just a nice little foundational video in case you didn't see the Last Divinity's release or wanted to hear my thoughts on the changes. So first we have uh, Impsicle can give Queen's Impling and has increased chances to give Imp Scholar and Transcend Imp. Uh, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's a bit of a nerf because getting Queen's Impling is going to be a little worse, but higher chances of Imp Scholar and Transcend Imp offset that. Cursed Vines uh, gives the player Vine Grass with Purge to rearrange enemies as they see fit. Significantly better. That Relic is... oh, that's pretty good, I would say. Assuming it just gives a Vine Grasp with Purge every turn, that's just, like, you would never not take this. Kills backline targets for you early game. Uh, can pull heavies in front of the tanks. Seems really good. Hammer chest plates plus two health. Okay. Yo, Hornbreaker Prince's Reaper path and all of Tethys' paths gain a little more health? Nice. That's really good. Uh, like, that's that's excellent. Uh, I'll have to see how much, but like, who buddy? Sorry, quick sip of the coffee. I just woke up not too long ago. Cultivating Sentience card, card draw bonus no longer grows bigger at levels 2 and 3. Yeah, I mean, that is... Uh, if there were ever a nerf that I said needed to happen... It had to be that. Cultivating Sentient's card draw bonus at 3 was just ridiculous. Tethys' handheld totem path now deals more damage at 2 and 3. Makes sense. Uh, spell. This is the spell weakness path. Spell weakness sweep. More damage on it doesn't really matter unless it's a big amount. Like if she's gaining 5 and 10 damage on 2 and 3, it, uh, who cares? But if it's a meaningful amount of damage, maybe it matters. Hard to say. I guess mostly it's just good so she doesn't get decimated by Sapsaraf, really. Uh, the one that I read that I'm the most excited about here, mm -hmm. Lil Fade's Eternal Flame Path has had its attack bonus reduced, but it no longer increases Ember cost when she dies, and they added Quick to it. Finally. Honestly, that's all I can say, finally. I'm really excited for that. That seems really fun. Little Fade stacking endlessly. But it doesn't just insta-kill you if she dies. I think that's pretty cool. I'll probably play around a little more with Eternal Flame. So they did all of the card changes in one big lump. So we'll just read through them clan by clan here. So Hellhorn had Horned Warrior, Steelworker, Railbeater, Fledgling, Imp, Hornbreak, and Imp in a box get stronger. Important work was nerfed. So Horned Warrior attack has been decreased in half, but he gained multi-strike one, a very good change because now Horned Warrior uh, scales a lot better with rage. He also is the unit in, if you didn't know, each of the Last Divinity clans, or each of the clans in Last Divinity now has a unit that gives multi-strike. If you uh, infuse them into another unit, Horned Warrior is that unit for... Hellhorn. You'll probably click on him basically every time you see him now. It seems like a pretty important thing to do. Uh, Steelworker affects all friendly units. I think that this is good. This is a change that I'll have to actually play with. I think it's good, but it might just be worthless. Like, I've been thinking about it. 
this is this is the one that I'm really not sure about. In theory, this is worth like 10 to 15 armor per turn instead of just five. But it's 10 to 15 armor spread over all three of your units, which isn't really something you care about all that often. Usually you're just stacking armor on a single unit and then doubling it or just imping up on a single unit. But I don't know. Like We'll have to see. Maybe I'll be surprised. But it really doesn't feel that important to me. Railbeater inflicts melee weakness instead of pushing enemies. Maybe cool. I don't know. Uh, the pushback was obviously an act of detriment, so now he doesn't just hurt your run. And also, giving friendly units melee weakness on strike with his infusion will be pretty cool. Imagine giving Dante six melee weakness on strike, although he would just, uh, you know, it wouldn't actually work how you would want it to, but don't think about it too much. Budgling him gives two more rage. Cool. Horn break hits twice. Cool. Imp in a box is the same changes as Impsicle. Sure. Important work nerfed its end regain, but from two to one. Sure. Hellhorn change is overall pretty good. I think Horn Warrior got a lot better, and uh, Steelworker is not bad. It's just really hard for Steelworker to compete when the, in the game there is uh, Beefy Shark, who gains three armor on and can't. Steelworker is going to really struggle. It's tough. I don't really know what you would do. Maybe like Revenge gain armor, but that's dangerous to put in the game too. So I don't know. Awoken got. Thorn Hollow has more attack. Need to pay more Ember for Invigorating Solution. Okay. Unleash the Wildwood and cards drawn from Awoken Rail Spike. Uh, so Thorn Hollow gained 10 attack. Invigorating Solution and Unleash the Wildwood had their cost increase from 0 to 1, and Awoken Rail Spike's Ember reduction was 2 to 1. Thorn Hollow gaining 10 attack, it doesn't matter. It's like kind of nice, I guess, for early game stuff if you pick them up, but. <laughs> Past Daedalus, that doesn't matter. Invigorating Solution and Unleash the Wildwood getting nerfed is very uh, correct. You would never not take these cards. And then Rail Spike 2-1, to one. sure. And it doesn't really matter either. Nothing too crazy there. Stygian, what do we got here? Nothing. Mollus Mage's magic power went from 8 to 10. I mean, I, I really don't think you're going to be picking Mollusk Mage in Stygian. Even at 10 magic power, that seems good, but giving up one space on your train plus one card draw for 10 magic power, it's just not worth it. I think the change they would have to make for me to start picking Mollusk Mage is he'd have to give magic power to the entire train. I'd, I'd have to be able to plant him top four and then get the bonus everywhere. Because otherwise he's just in the way. You're going to want to be casting your spells on the floors where it matters to cast spells. Which is going to be the floors within cans, which is generally going to be your main floor. So it's hard to find a space for him, I think. But maybe I'll be wrong. It's nicer when you start with him now, at least. Umbra. Uh, what do we got here? Ember cash cost up. Making of a morsel cost down. Ooh. Making of a morsel cost down is pretty cool. Minus one holdover makes that a free holdover, which is really strong. Oh yeah, and then Morsels got buffed across the board, that's right. Magma Morsel, like all of the Morsels got their stats increased by uh, one third or 33%. Or is it, it's like 33 or 50% even. Except for Morsel Miner, but still, like holy moly. These Morsel changes are insane. Mor Rubble Morsel gives a plus one plus one when you eat him now. Like, I, I cannot stress to you enough how insane these Morsel changes are. I think Umbra gets significantly stronger with this. The Morsels also gain stats themselves, so it's easier for them to chump block and not die. I recognize that they're getting stronger, but the game is also getting harder with the inter inter introduction of the last divinity, but still, I think this change is insane. Uh, melting, Lady of the House, Wax and Spike, and Intent on Death was nerfed. Uh, Lady of the House got 10 attack and 5 health. I mean, I don't really care. I think that Lady of the House, if you see her in a banner and you see multi-strike, you can make her work. Because now she's doing... like Lady of the House, multi-strike, and uh, plus 10 and burnout too. I think it's fine. But it's hard to make happen. But if you do see those things, she's fine, and now she's even better, but what are the odds? 
uh, Wax and Spike got brought down, or Wax and Spike got buffed, never mind. Attack scaling up from 3 to 4x, and it gets 1x to 4x burnout, I think. Or it might just be flat 4 burnout. I think it is a flat 4 and not an x. And then Intent on Death has consumed now. So, if you want to do anything crazy with Intent on Death now, it costs you a remove consume slot, but that's fine. Little Fade killed this card. Uh, last stuff here. Covenant rank 10 and 20 challenges have been changed. Rank 10 gives Ember Drain to the first unit played on the top floor each turn, and rank 20's capacity reduction always goes middle floor. Uh, yeah, this is one of the most important changes that I think they could possibly make. I, I will enjoy this game significantly more with this one sentence change. Or I guess it's two. But it's it's really, really, really important to me. Ember Drain on top four instead of Daze, it makes a lot of strategies more viable. I've been talking about this a little bit here and there. I think Dark Calling Rector got a lot better because now you can play him top four and reform on the first turn. Uh, I think the reform strategies in general got a lot better because now you can reform drafts and elevator them up. So if you... Play a draft naturally on the bottom floor, it hits and then burns out. You reform it, play it middle floor, it hits and then dies. Or I guess it would die, it just dies. Then you can play it top floor where you're going to leave it forever, and it gets to take its attack. The biggest problem with reform strategies that I've always found is that when you get to the top floor and you play your unit, it doesn't get to attack after being buffed twice through the reforming. And then the enemies just walk up to the pyre at full health, and if you do that in every combat, you eventually just die. I think this is a really strong change. I don't think it's going to like change the way I play particularly much, but it will be nice to try out reforming again. I still think reforming is a little tricky because your units don't attack first, but it's definitely a good change. And then space loss on the middle floor just means, oh my god, I don't have to bet I don't have to go, well, 66% of the time I win this round, and if we low roll, I lose because I can't play top four. That never happens anymore. And at the same time, uh, as you can see in the like design theory here, each of the floors has a uh, challenge to it. Top four makes you have less energy next turn, middle floor has uh, less space, and bottom floor gets hit first. So you have to make a decision on where you want to play. I think generally you're just going to play top four and eat the ember loss, but... Sometimes that might not be possible. You can also still just take space to offset the space loss. Sick. Uh, that's it. This is really, really exciting. I'm really looking forward to playing with these changes. I have been kind of taking a break from this game. I haven't streamed it, but I am going to be playing a lot of this uh, coming up on stream. Uh, probably the same amount on YouTube, however... I imagine that since I'll be streaming this again, I'll probably just be cutting highlights like I have been every now and then for Slay the Spire. I'll just do that. It, depending on how much we get, I'll maybe just do one daily for, our, for Monster Train. We'll see how it goes and all of that. But yeah, if you want to check this out live, I'll be streaming this tonight. Uh, roughly eight hours after this video goes up. And yeah, I'm going to go record today's regular episode now. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you in the next one. Goodbye.